Hello, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about gastroenteritis, which of course in definition is an inflammation of the stomach or gastric lining and uh, intestinal lining. Then uh, primarily it is caused by viruses, bacteria or parasites and their symptoms include uh, vomiting, diarrhea and, and stomach pains. But in terms of definition, just say this is inflammation of the gastric lining and the intestinal lining resulting in vomiting and uh, diarrhea okay so it is also termed uh, stomach flu or intestinal flu then the omac is increased stool frequency with alteration of stool, cons uh, stool consistency then children in, de in the developing world or countries can expect on average about three to six uh, bouts of severe diarrhea every day. Then these factors for uh, gastri gastroenteritis. Yeah, this is common in winter season, poor in a poor sanitation area, travelers to developing countries, and men who have sex with men, and usually also in infants in daycare facilities. Then causes, like we said, we have. Uh, infectious causes and non-infectious causes then in terms of infectious agents the infectious agents include uh, viruses parasites fungal and bacteria and bacterial causes so for viruses we have norovirus rotavirus enteric adenovirus astrovirus causvirus then parasites we have uh, gizalam rambria cryptosporidium uh, pavum and Entomoeva historitica, then uh, fungal, we can have candida albicans, we can have bacterial causes, then the most common uh, cause of significant uh, adult gastroenteritis worldwide being the bacterial causes. So in terms of bacterial causes, uh, we can have bacteria whose pathogenesis is muc mucosal adherence, and mode of action is effacement of intestinal or of intestinal mucosa. Then clinical presentation is usually moderate or diarrhea. So examples of these pathogens include enteropathogenic E. coli, enteroaggressive E. coli, and diffusedly adhering E. coli. Then you can also have uh, pathogens whose pathogenesis is toxin produ production or enterotoxins and mode of action is uh, fluid secretion without mucosa damage and clinical presentation with uh, profu profuse artery diarrhea so examples of such organisms which uh, produce toxins okay such uh, whose uh, mode of action is fluid secretion without mucosa damage include so we can have vibrio cholerae salmonella species Campylobacter species, enterotoxigenic E. coli, and Bacillus cereus, Staphylococcus aureus producing enterotoxin B, and uh, Clostridium perfringens type A. Okay, then we can have another species. So we can have an, another examples. Old pathogenesis is mucosal invasion, and uh, mode of action is penetration and destruction of mucosa. And of course, after hearing that mode of action, the clinical presentation is blood diarrhea or dysentery. Then um, examples of such organisms which do which uh, cause such is uh, Shigella species and uh, Campylobacter species. Okay, then even uh, enteroinvasive E. coli as well can cause. Uh, can cause the same okay then we can move on to we can move on to the next okay so we can move on to the next for pathogenesis for for the next set of uh, organisms whose pathogenesis is uh, cytotoxic cy cytotoxin production and uh, whose mode of action is damage to mucosa and clinical presentation is also uh, diarrhea, blood diarrhea, or dysentery. 
So examples of organisms which cause cytotoxin production and that, that end up damaging the mucosa include Salmonella species, Campylobacter species, and Enterohemorrhagic E. coli. Okay. And non-infectious causes, we can have uh, drugs. So say, uh, certain drugs which can cause uh, diarrhea. We can have antibiotics such as uh, penicillins. Then others, even erythromycin, may cause uh, diarrhea. Then for chemicals, you can have lead poisoning. Then for we can also have others which have not, which we are, which we have not uh, specified here. So we can have, uh, so we can uh, we can end up having, so we can end up having uh, food allergens. So food allergens are one of the most uh, common causes of non-infectious diarrhea. Then we can have malabsorption syndromes such as lactose intolerance, celiac disease, okay, and uh, a lot of others, okay. Then in terms of history taking, so we wanted to know how you can take history for someone who has presented with uh, diarrhea or even just acute uh, gastroenteritis itself, okay. But specifically, I wanted to put diarrhea, okay. But remember, gastroenteritis is diarrhea with uh, vomiting. So someone, so this this, this is a scenario of someone, who a uh, forty-six year old who presents with diarrhea. Then the question is get a relevant history and ask important questions that will enable you to make a diagnosis, and list the questions. Don't write an essay. Then you have to note that for a physical ask, you have to introduce yourself, get the patient, gain consent, and you don't forget to thank the patients after you are done. Even if you have not yet uh, finished. So as long as the time is up, you can thank the patient for for the time they have uh, given you. Okay. So when you're starting, you have first, of course, you have to start with demographics. But since this is a relevant history, we are talking about, we are not going to, to, to ask a lot of things. So demographics, ask about, uh, the, about their, uh, where do, do they stay? So demographics, where do you stay? Then presenting, of course, you have been told the diarrhea, but you haven't been told the onset. So we ask, when did the diarrhea first start? How long has it been there? Uh, how long has it been there? Uh, how long has it, be, has it been there for? Okay, so how long has it been there? How long has it been there for? Okay. Then how often has it happened? Then how often, uh, how often has it happened? I don't know why I was repeating, repeating things. Okay, so how often has it happened? Then, uh, do you have diarrhea at night? Is there any blood or mucus in stool? Then, is there any abdominal pain, nausea, or vomiting? Then, if yes, so even the vomiting, you have to exhaust it once someone tell, uh, tells you a symptom. Uh, you have to exhaust the, uh, the symptom that they have told you. So, if someone agrees to vomiting, and now it, just when now it becomes gastroenteritis, so if they say, okay, so I'm vomiting, so if the vomiting is there, so is there blood? And how many times is the patient vomiting? And what is the nature of the vomitus? Okay, is it associated with abdominal bloating, anal pain, or tenesmus? Okay, that's uh, other symptoms you can ask. Okay, then uh, when and where was the last meal? And what was the and what was the last meal? Okay, so this is now where now we, talk, we are talking of. Uh, uh, food allergens to try to look for food allergens okay then you can ask if the patient tells you uh, what they ate then you can also ask did it contain uh, milk or dairy uh, dairy products or sugar okay then any associated fevers so uh, any associations with specific uh, meal water sanitation and uh, food cooking skills you also ask about the food cooking skills okay those are the same questions you usually ask then after you are done with your history now so you have to be bear in mind bear in mind the systemic way of answering uh, asking questions so all these things we are asking is uh, we asked the presenting complaint we went to history of presenting complaint we also reviewed the systems so now we can go to the past medical history but specifically we usually ask for for 
you just ask for the relevant uh, questions so past mental history ask past mental history of hiv or any my absorption syndromes or history of abdominal history of abdominal surgery that's what you usually, usually uh, ask okay and then after from past mental history go to drug history ask if they have any med if they were taking any medications or if they have any drug allergies okay for because because food allergies uh, just ask them in uh, the history the family history you can ask if there's anyone else at home with the diarrhea so there's no need of asking if there's anyone with a, a with diabetes a plebs asthma no just ask them if there's anyone, anyone else at home with the diarrhea since we are talking about the uh, relevant history okay then uh, you can also ask community related outbreak of diarrhea okay then most of those are some of the questions you should ask when you're talking uh, taking history in uh, in in a patient with diarrhea then symptoms of course vomiting uh, loss of appetite abdominal pains passing the stool in some cases lethargy diarrhea blood in stool in some cases in other symptoms can it, uh, this condition can be accompanied by fever sometimes weakness and uh, hypotension especially if the patient has uh, has been having uh, uh, excessive bouts of uh, diarrhea or multiple episodes of vomiting the diagnosis is usually a uh, uh, is mostly clinical diagnosis from the history and or physical examination but for confirmation to say whether someone treated as gastroenteritis the confirmation confirmatory diagnosis is usually histopathological okay but clinically you can say okay someone has acute, acute gastroenteritis okay but for it to actually confirm you need the histopathological investigations okay the investigations we can have a uh, stool uh, but remember we are saying it's clinical but if you are to investigate or you, you can do two mcs for fecal microscopy for for polymorphs parasites all sites and uh, of course you can do culture the in electron microscopy used to diagnose viral infections and of course you can do analysis for toxins particularly for pseudomembranous colitis which is caused by the clostridium difficile toxins and the clostridium uh, i think i there is i even add uh, there is even uh, a scenario on uh, pseudomembranous colitis which you can check on the channel in one of the pediatric uh, OSC stations okay it's available on the channel so we will go through the so the membranous colitis which is a bacteria that is associated with a uh, long term use of antibiotics and then blood investigations can do full blood count and the blood culture which helps identif in the identification of bacteremia which may be present you can do you and is uh, especially when someone is, as, is having the hydration you can do an abdominal x-ray or ultrasound to exclude other causes of abdominal pain you can do sigmoidoscopy which is of course it's not often uh, uh, often it is not often necessary so unless maybe someone has inflammatory diseases and is uh, inflammatory diseases that need to be excluded then in terms of management usually it's bed rest fluid and electrolyte replacement with oral rehydration solution then uh, follow the dosaging for already addition solution then iv hydration may be necessary in those with uh, severe uh, vomiting or dehydration then most infection infections are self-limiting so usually you don't necessarily always prescribe antibiotics then if you were to prescribe antibiotic treatment it is only warranted in severe where someone may be is a, where someone is having a foul smelling stool high grade fevers and blood diarrhea or the infective agent has been identified and it is even, the, the lab has even specified to say it is uh, susceptible let's say if it was uh, salmonella they say okay it is susceptible to ciprofloxacin uh, or even uh, shigella and campylobacter okay then complications we can have dehydration electrolyte imbalance Pre-renal failure, a secondary lactose intolerance, particularly in infants, you can have uh, sepsis and shock, 
particularly salmonella and shigella the ones which may cause this then you can also have hemorrhage kiuremic syndrome which is associated with toxins from e coli and gene o157 okay then you can also have grain bear syndrome which may occur weeks after recovery from campylobacter gastroenteritis okay and then in terms of prevention of course you have to wash your hands thoroughly with uh, soap and uh, water after going to the toilet or changing nappies and then you have to make sure foods are thoroughly uh, cooked are you in the also use of well treated water then keep cold uh, food below five degrees celsius or hot food above 60 degrees celsius to prevent the growth of uh, bacteria and then you have to clean the toilet and bathroom regularly especially the toilet seat door handles and uh, you find that uh, one of the things which are being discussed now is that uh, most people will clean the you clean the toilet bathrooms the toilet seat door handles they even wash their hands but they also go and start uh, using their phone again and remember there are more uh, bacteria on the screen of the phone as uh, more than the toilet seats okay so that's one of the things which is being discussed about uh, people doing things uh, without a uh, concern for for their for their safety okay then also when traveling to also when traveling to either you're traveling to a developing country and then of course you have to either take note of uh, take note of the area you are going to so if you go to that area maybe you can just be buying uh if you can just be buying bottled uh, water okay and you, you are not supposed to buy treat, uh, food on the streets okay but that's when you are traveling to an endemic area or uh, a developing country usually okay otherwise that's the end of the tutorial uh thank you for watching if you haven't uh, subscribed please subscribe and hit the bell notification and uh, also check out uh acute diarrheal diseases so there's a tutorial on acute diarrheal disease you can check it out on the channel that you familiarize yourself with the differences between age and add so age is acute gastroenteritis that is diarrhea and uh, vomiting but add is usually just uh, diarrhea alone okay but in terms of treatment so usually you usually follow the same uh, then in adults you have to know that uh, the hydration status when checking for the hydration status sunken eyes is usually not one of the major signs you use when checking for hydration status so check for the capillary refill time check for the pulse and uh, uh, other things okay don't trust the uh, sunken eyes okay i think we can end here thank you for watching once again please subscribe and hit the bell notification and share this video to someone you think they may benefit from it okay